Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be learning how to do statistics and jump. So we're what, eight, nine videos in, and now we're gonna do some stats. We're gonna do some quantitative comparison of means. And what this means is we will eh, get it, run a t-test, a NOVA, and Tukey's HSD and jump. So just quick statistics theory a t-test compares two things and only two things and ANOVA looks at a group of many different things or different categories say different plants and decides is there a difference between them while the two keys HST follows up the ANOVA and says these are the ones that are different uh, in jump we're just going to skip the ANOVA most of the time, but we'll show it just for the sake of showing it. So let's go over to jump. If we have our leaf data here, um, I'm going to exclude two of these data sets right now so that we have two to compare. We're going to compare Allenkinium and Fahardium. Maybe we have a research question, and our question is, is one of these longer than the other? Um, specifically, I guess our question would be, are these the same length? And then we will try to reject that. So we're going to go to Analyze, where we have not been yet, and we're going to do Fit Y by X. This is for relationship modeling. This is where all of our one-way analysis comparisons are. And this little quadrant down here is very useful. So you want to make sure when you put your factor on here, so think of it just like our bar graph. We have our x versus y. Uh, that's the wrong. There we go. You know, we want to compare these two data sets and ask, are they different? On our x, we have our species, and on our y, we have our leaf length. And if we set this up correctly, we have a categorical variable on our x versus a bivariate or a continuous variable on our why this gives us a one-way analysis, which this is one appropriate way of modeling our data, which would be with a cat and whisker plot. Uh, and this will say one way. If you import your data wrong and you have two categorical data sets, you will do a contingency and you will have no idea what the next screen means. Um, most of the data we work with will only need to use X and Y this buy option is very interesting. Like if I'm comparing sections and I want to say, do I have different, uh, that's not a great example. Uh, but but there, are, there are times when you might use this buy option. It'll split these this comparison by a third variable and run multiple comparisons um, across those. So I'm going to hit OK. And I have base view here, which is very uninformative. So I'm going to hold down my Alt key or on Windows or Mac, the function key, click the red arrow. And this will bring up our everything. So really, we only use the screen to get uh, statistical information. So I want to run what's called the t-test here. And for this one, this one versus one comparison, that's all I need. So I run that, and I get out a result. And we really only care about this first value here. Um, but why don't we read through it? So this is saying between the means, the difference is 1.07. There's a standard error difference of 0.27, which is, this is basically the standard deviation, but accounting for the sample size and some other stuff. Uh, this tells us we're aiming for a 95% confidence window. Our T ratio is four, which means we are four uh, standard errors away. So if you divide this number by this number, you get this number. Um, and our degrees of freedom here, our DF is uh, a measure of how much confidence we have based on our sample size. So now we want to read these. We only do in our course um, 
the word is escaping me, but uh, two-way uh, non-directional t-test. So we're not asking, is our sample bigger or smaller? We're asking, are these different? Uh, and that's what this prob greater than magnitude t is. So we only care about this value. Uh, and it pains me to say it, but in our course, if this is less than 0.05, and it'll tell you it when you hover on it, uh, that there is a significant difference between these. So we would conclude that these are significantly different. If I have my uh, graph over here, that would be good enough that I'm going to plop a line on here and some text on it. Text annotate with a star. And boom. Maybe I'll make the star bigger so that I can read it. Uh, and that's that's it. This is how we would show significance for a, uh, a t-test between two groups. Now, obviously, our data is not like this. We have, I don't know why it won't let me delete it. We have got four sets of people in here. So let's, or plants in here. So let's add these plants back in. Uh, now we've got these four. Uh, I do have some weird custom value ordering on here, which I am now going to delete. We're going to remove the value coloring because I like defaults. So interesting fun fact, we can actually sort these uh, so that they're ascending or descending, and this can be useful for when we want to annotate this. Um, but now let's go back, let's do our analyze fit y by x. Uh, because I just ran the same analysis, I'm just going to hit this recall button. So this will remember what I just put in here. Um, now I have extra data, but that's okay. Then change what my variables were. Again, we have this. Now I'm going to hit alt. I'm going to do both the means ANOVA test and this all pairs to GHST. We are not going to do this each pair. Uh, again, we're not going to go into the statistics of it, but basically every time we run a statistical test like the t-test, we assume there's a chance that the that what we see is due to chance and we have a certain cutoff that we're willing to accept as this is the amount we're willing to risk that this isn't a real observation. That's just due to plain luck. Uh, if you run the student's t-test many times, you will get significant results just because you're running the test many times and eventually you'll see that chance by mistake. This two keys HSD says, I know I'm gonna run this test many times before I do it, so I'm gonna adjust my tolerance for that uh, random bad luck uh, to make things a little better. So I'm going to run both of these. So the ANOVA test is, um, personally, in our workflow, it's a little antiquated. We don't need to do this. But the ANOVA test is easy to run compared to a Tukey. So back in the day, when you had to manually calculate things, you would do the ANOVA. And the ANOVA will tell you with this uh, probability here, this F test, whether or not it's worth continuing. So because this is significant, the ANOVA test says within my samples, there is a difference. But it doesn't tell us where that difference is. So we followed up with what's called a post hoc test. And in this case, that's the two key HSD. So now we go down to the HSD and this report is a little complex, so there's a lot of information here. Uh, the ANOVA is pretty straightforward. Uh, you look at this value and say, yes, we passed, or no, we didn't pass. In this case, the ANOVA gave us a significant result, so we go on. Uh, the two keys then tries to tell us where those differences are. So I actually really like the connecting letter report. So the connecting letter report means Samples with different letters are significantly different. So Fahardium is different from all of these because it has a unique letter. Alenkinium is different from all of these because it has a unique letter. 
but the Jordanicus and Preceptoria are similar to each other because they have a unique letter but different from the others. And you can see that down here too. So this is the, the difference report and this is uh, comparing each individual comparison, giving it a, a p-value. So basically anything that compares the Preceptoria and Jordanicus or these top four are incredibly significant just because these guys are so small. Uh, whereas these ones are a little, the Fahardium and Alicinium are a little, you know, different p-value, but I don't want to grate shades of p here because we all agree that 05 is the cutoff, so if we're less than 05, it's not a huge deal how much less than 05 we are. Um, you know, I'm willing to say like point. 01 versus 0.04 is convincing, more convincing, but 0.0001 versus 0.0005, like splitting hairs. Uh, and then notably it's saying in this comparison that the Jordanicus and Preceptoria are not significantly different. And if you know our teaching team, that makes sense because Jordan is a preceptor. Um, so now we have to label this graph with that information. Uh, and there's a couple ways to do it. The easiest way, I think, we only have one non-significant difference. So I would actually just put one line on here and annotate it not significant. And then in my caption, I would have my statistics information at the end. I'd say Tukey's HSD, N equals whatever my smallest N number here is, I think like 20 or 24, 25, I think it's 25, 25. Uh, all differences are significant, P less than 0.05, except where shown. Uh, and then that's implying that this is the only non-significant comparison, everything else is significant. Um, the next best way would be to put on the connecting letters report. So um, I guess you, you can label these how you want. But I know these two are the same letter. This one's a different letter. Notice that I'm not caring to line up my letters that are output here over here because the letters are really, ab they're just abstract. They're just telling me what different guys are or different relationships are. So I can arbitrarily name those relationships whatever I want. Um, again, annotating in jump is kind of painful because there's no alignment tools or anything. Like I can't select two of these and right click a line. I hope I become the poster child for them someday so they'll listen to what I care about. Uh, and then here we have it. And then I would get rid of this uh, extra information about how it's labeled. We'll hide the title legend footer. But, you know. uh, and then we would go through and put on the, the error bar. Um, yeah, I'm trying to, I'll do it. We'll do it. We'll get in the habit. It's good to make these. So I want to put the error interval as a standard deviation, and then I'm going to go to customize, I'm going to move this down, make it fat, apply, and then I want to change these guys' colors. This is way easier to do with the legend, so I'm going to turn the legend back on, make this medium gray, we'll make this light gray. And there we have it are wonderful, ready to input into a lab manual result. Slide. I want to change the error bar black. There we go. Now we're ready. Now we're good. And you can see this kind of makes sense that, you know, these two are the same height. They should be the same grouping. These guys are different heights, and it just happens our sample size is large enough that we're confident that this difference is real. Uh, and more impressively, that this difference is real. Like, 
these error bars almost overlap the means of the other ones, which is usually a sign that, okay, this is getting close. We need to really check this. So that's how we compare means uh, in our course. We'll, we hope that when you do this, um, don't make this about the p-values. Like the statistical information supports your argument. It is not the entire argument. So you would say there is a difference between these, uh, and we think that's because they're different species, and this plant needs bigger leaves to accomplish some task than this plant. Uh, something to that effect. All right, so thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.